Keeper. He's very, very powerful. We saw the magnificent clutch yesterday. That's going to be a memorable moment for the rest of his career as really a starting point for what he's going to be able to deliver. But man, he's going to be have to be a monster on this map no matter what happens. All the issues are fixed, except for the one of G2 dropping an eight round lead on Inferno. They've got to forget about that. Map one is done, it's over. FaZe take a one nothing lead in this grand final series. It's G2's map pick, it's Mirage to have them bounce back, get started, find some redemption for the collapse on Inferno. And we're gonna go live into the pistol round. It's gonna be utility for Alexi B. It's gonna be utility on Nico as well. All USPs one more time for FaZe Clan. Kerrigan holding onto that tick, uh, that, the, excuse me, the defuse kit. So keep an eye on his position as this round unfolds. Very B-centric defense right now from FaZe. And interestingly enough, it looks like it's gonna be an executed hit toward A from G2. Rops inside a connector, JKS back toward ticket booth. C1 dropping off balcony already, and the rotations are on, so they just need to hold them back. Hold them off the bomb site. JKS starting off resoundingly with a headshot on a falling hunter as he tried to land inside of the site. Flashed. JKS goes back around the corner. They check behind the box. They know now he's alone in that far back, but he's got another, and good damage as well onto Nico. Tags him down to just 14 HP as the rotations and the cavalry all marching on the stairs. Alexi B, he can actually swing through this potentially. No time now. No time now. I th thought he might try and go through the vent and get in behind them, but bomb is already going to be defused. They're going to be chasing him down no time at all. Yeah, it's not even planted for him. That was a good kill. That kill Alexi B gets in connector is one they needed if they were going to recover the round. It sets up a crossfire, but so many bodies from FaZe retaking up those CT spawn steps. Just packs ticket, and no one from G2 able to land the shots. One to nothing for FaZe. Important pistol rounds. Ooh, even the follow-up. Good shooting from Twist. Ooh, in the third one as well. He's got to be happy. He's got to be pleased. What a comeback they had. And he's got them powered up in this first round of Mirage. Two AK-47s picked up off the back of that plant. It's going to be Hunter and Nico with those. Three deagles to surround it. A lot of bodies for G2 already lined up on A ramp. They want to find a timing for this. Alexi B over in the B halls with utility. Nico looking for the gap. No one on the other side of it yet. More standard across the map this time. Rops, Shadow, Alexi B trying to make some noise over on the B site. Keep the defense contained. This is all a ruse. He just wants to pull them in that direction, but a clean kill from Kerrigan and Brokey. Already realized of this. He's going to go back that direction. Goes through murder hole. Rops down. Entries are good. JKS only good for one. The fact that they've opened the front side of the site, but they do not have utility. They got one Molotov. That's it. Better be a flashbang. Smoke is just kind of streaming okay. over. Smoke was, must have been in the air because when I looked, they didn't have one. So they still at least can cover off connector. This is the bigger problem, though. Brokey still had tons of vision to work with. Yeah, Jax got it all to do. Kerrigan slides out, finds one more kill. Two to nothing. A little bit dangerous, but FaZe handles it well. The kills don't really matter. They're just happy with the win. Should be back to pistols for most of G2. Maybe a deagle on Nico as they give him a chance to find an opening for him, but with only actually picking up a few more deagles as well. So they've got some dangerous elements here. It's phase off to a hot start. They started Inferno, what, 4 to 11 in the first half. It was, it was an atrocious beginning. But they've come alive in the series. Nico gonna head towards top mid. And Brokey is gonna drop down into the underpass on an information play. He's only got a USP, so no real, excuse me. Rops is gonna be there as well with the SMG. Here we go, Hunter sees the leg, connects the shot, Brokey the follow-up. He didn't expect that, but he adjusts. Okay, now it's a problem. Massive problem. Twist needs to hit these shots as well. He's getting tapped. He gets two, making a third back. That's massive because it controls the round and they have control of the weapons once more. He was tapped down to 45. I was starting to get a little bit worried for him. But Hunter is still alive in this round and he already showcasing that he can hit the headshots with the Deagle. Is going to try and do exactly that. Three more left alive and just is backed off the window and switched over to connector instead. Only eight HP for Hunter to work with in this situation. Twist. Could get the ace here. Three kills. Lexi and Hunter trying to trade this one off. Where's the first peak? Twist is no attention's not taken away. He's got the fourth. One more to find. 20 HP. He's gonna back away from the fight. Doesn't want to go down. They still haven't spotted Alexi. 
No real chance of G2 actually winning the round. And there goes Twist. He gets the 4K, nothing more. Full HP on Alexi, but no armor. A little bit of utility, but how can you possibly know where JKS is? How can you pop? Oh, Shadow Shows. Shadow Shows and the nade throw him. That's certainly one way to give away the position. He transfers inside of the site. Alexi B will try and jump upon his position. The box for a quick check. I don't think he's realized he's trying to steer. He's back toward the CT stairs, so JKS gets the angle for free. We go 3 nothing for FaZe. That now puts us... I do my math correctly, 15 rounds in a row for them. I know it's tough to connect two maps together. There's different circumstances, another pistol round, but also there's only been nine T-sided rounds so far in this game. No, but it's a good thing to speak to in terms of the psychological aspect of the game. I mean, there's there's been nothing positive for G2 in so long. As you said, 15 rounds, that's a long time to, jo to go just taking L's left and right. Good shooting from Twist to recover the round because that was a pretty dangerous situation, especially considering Nico is one of those deagles. Honestly, with the op has made it towards top mid. Nothing out of character yet in terms of mid-position from FaZe. No one trying to get down below. Or hold the underpass, try and get toward the fence. We've seen people boosting more recently than going for the jump itself, and it is going to be G2. They're going to use this spot a lot. They did it yesterday against Na'Vi. We saw on both the CT and the T sides. You know that they want to take mid with this position. Honestly, as well, just waiting to hold this angle as Hunter's gonna clear it. Oh, honestly, look, not quite. He's got the crosshair firmly fixed. They'll see JKS if he slides out, but the timing is everything. JKS, they didn't get him and they shot. Now he knows the situation, they have to back off. Yeah, kind of calling a stalemate to see the utility rain in. Twist, blinded, stuck in the corner. Easy kill for Alexi B, no help for Twist. Remember, they know this position. Another pop flash in, huge kill from JKS. Molotov is gonna prevent anyone from the follow-up peak. Rops was able to find one as well. It's a three on four for G2, and Modesty cannot find the equalizer. Had the chance on a JKS. Roki can, though. He'll get Nico. Smoke's gone inside a connector. That gives him the position back. That's where Rops went running. He already found the one kill and slid away toward the window, but Hunter again, the one so far stepping up on G2, trying to find him their first round. Just two more kills. Would put him in that position as he swings through connector once more. He's not sure where Rops has gone, but knows that's where he existed. He has that information, not where Kerrigan is, and that's good enough for him to slide out. And with full vision, he gets the easy kill. Yeah, Kerrigan just looking for the timing. Feels no pressure, knows his teammate doesn't spot anything either, and just finds a nice peek out for information. Four to nothing for FaZe. Looking good on their own CT side. Brokey's gonna have the alt back in his hands. As he finds Nico trying to lurk up into the A bomb site. Good job from FaZe. Maintaining pressure on mid, despite the fact that G2 had a pretty good hold on it. And not enough utility, not enough safety for Hunter coming up connector. Twist again going to be the one tasked for holding off this mid position. This will be a contentious battle. Hunter, oh my, so fast. He's already up on top of the fence position. Can jump in the window on his own from there. Now that obviously signals with noise, but he can also hold against Kerrigan. He slid back down. He's going to take over. Catwalk instead as they try and work in the B site. Sprokey, however, is holding it, falling away. They'll call that he's gone to jail because Hunter would have seen that, but he was busy and occupied trying to find Kerrigan who smokes himself off to reverse the position from the arch. And he gets Monacy inside of the window. There's really no access for anyone. Hunter through the smoke would love to find it. Kerrigan's got that. Double kill in the round for Kerrigan. This G2 offense being shut down. It's all on Nico, one versus four. And just with the Deagle, Rops jumping up. Faze started to look real powerful. Another buy round coming in next for G2. What can they have? Again, mentioned at the start of the map, coach not able to be with them. If they need to find some adjustments, Almanac behind him is going to be familiar with the playbook. And a lot of pressure on Alexi B to adjust his calls and adjust his strategies on the fly. Certainly, that has to be mentioned again, the pressure aspect of that. Mid-round calls get more and more difficult when things are falling apart, when people are starting to overextend or force, you know, the, the, the tilt aspect, force themselves into situations that aren't disciplined. And he has to be the one that controls that without the coach. That's so much harder to do. Now, I mean, it's, it's G2's turn to just start this map, not only slow as a team with zero rounds, but I mean, also even just individually, where we saw FaZe kind of very quiet at the start of Inferno. Now here on Mirage, it's Nico with zero kills, Monacy with one kill, Jax with one kill. Still early on, obviously plenty of time for them to recover. This is not what you want if you want to forget, forget the horrors of Inferno. Window jump up on top. Alexi, he didn't, he didn't spot it at all. 
I thought he would have seen him. I thought Rops was clear as day. He disappeared underneath the smoke. There was a chance there for a pick. And now it gets dangerous because Rops, he wants action. He wants a fight. Smoke gone. Underneath. We know that they like to play that position. He's going to go forward surely. He has to. He drops down. He needs a double. Trying to do utility damage to clear out the corner at the very least. But once again, he's going to have company down below any second. Hunter didn't look straight up. Oh, Hunter didn't look straight up. Rops is going to get away with it. Hunter could have easily had the kill, but didn't have the information. I cannot believe how long he stayed up there and kept that fight up, even using utility to try and flush Alexi B out. Even when the Molotov beneath him that was protecting him, G2 is going to look back and realize, how didn't Alexi spot him? How did anyone coming from underpass spot him at all? So Rops rotates inside of ladder that gives him access back toward the window again that's smoked off and they're even pre-firing his position but that means Kerrigan takes the long rotation it's Tedno JKS pushed all the way through Palace has now cut off the A side of the map they certainly could still try and battle back by twists and if you don't have Palace control there's no way you're making the call to fall back towards the A bomb site that's the bomb down inside ladder room Rops is gonna find an escape route he's gonna tuck himself make him a small target twist gets activated he gets involved remains aggressive Rops peeks out way to juggle the aggression between these two players Rops and twist difficult targets to find and Jax falls last six to nothing G2 is gone girl where are they this is not at all the start we definitely had on Inferno Nico zero and six right now. I don't know when exactly it happened on Inferno, but they were knocked completely out of their game and they have not been able to recover. As you said, zero kills on Nico. This is where you'd want one of your star players. This next gun round better be huge. Maybe G2 can steal one here, but the next time AKs in an AWP get back into the hands of your players, you're looking at someone like Nico, you're looking at someone like Monacy or Hunter to give you the kind of play that gives you some energy back into this lifeless team at the moment because FaZe's defense is so dynamic and so assertive at the moment. G2's not getting close to anything they want in these rounds. JKS as well continues to be impressive. 7 0 in the last 15 rounds, specifically on the opening duels. 17 rounds and counting. Make that 18, excuse me, and counting. And 17 alone on the T side. But again, I, I have to bring it back up because yesterday against Navi, now I know Navi circumstances, they probably weren't at their best, and I'm not going to excuse them, or excuse me, I'm not going to fault them for that. But G2 looks so good on the attack. So where has that gone? Don't have a good answer. I don't think they do either yet. Monacy and Alexi, base of connector. They're going to have Twist to contend with. A nice little headshot angle for him, and this is what he specializes in. They don't want to mess with it at all. There's the peak. Good find from Alexi. Good aggressive swing, but there's still three defenders here. Oh, that kill, it pulls some of them away. Nico can't connect with the Deagle. There's a low HP, low HP player inside of the site. It's Rops waiting. Will they actually clear him? Moving around, Jax knows nothing. Jax has no idea. He's about to get absolutely sideswiped from Rops. That's going to be the bomb down with 15 seconds. How do you recover? Three on three here, and now the rifles step up next. It's all phase. That's spectacular from Rob. Sliding out from behind Firebox, never detected, holds his nerve and springs the trap at the right time. They were even searching for the CTs. They were running out knowing, hang on, we got 15 seconds, and they leave the planter alone. No response, no trade. And Nico is now 0, 1, and 7. That is, I, that's got to be pressure. Surely that has to be pressure. The, it's, it's not great, but remember, he's playing the alone positions on the map, so he's kind of relying on some of his teammates to find some kills that can activate him, right? He wants to find some 1v1s at a palace, some 1v1s coming up a ramp, and to do that, you need to find a kill in mid to make sure the support system at the A bomb site isn't going to be there, and Nico's never been able to really find the fights that he's wanting quite yet. Not a full... Not fully excusing him of that, but... It's been, it's been very difficult for the entire G, G2 team on this side of the map so far. Seven to nothing for FaZe. This round, they go for some aggression down a ramp. They're letting G2 have control of middle, where they fought for it previously. This time, they're fine letting it go for the moment. This is an interesting little battle that's going on back towards spawn as well. Nico was inside Palace, heard them flash inside of the ramp and run forward. So he thinks, because remember, they had this position two rounds ago. They actually pushed all the way through and cut off the rotation. They lost any chance of falling back. You mentioned it. He has to clear this, despite that he had to give up Palace just to do so. He might have just told his teammates, good, they're, they're, they're aggressive in a ramp. Come back, rotate back around. I need a pop flash. Let's go clear this out. We have them right where we want them. Aggressive 
push forward. Nico's going to line up the flashbang for his teammates. Hunter Alexi to lead the way with the AK 47s. It's everything here. Flashbang. Oh, it misses its mark. It misses its mark, but they still get the trades. Thankfully, the other cousin steps up to the plate. He's not done there. He's got to go inside of the site. 38 seconds. He'll mullet off toward the jungle position. Pop flash toward the connector and the smoke will land. Kerrigan had vision knowing no one's in front though, so he goes straight through it. It broke. He already finds the first two shots, nearly missing out on the aim. Kerrigan turns it back and Nico drops, but Modesty steps up finally with the AWP. He'll double it, and we've got a round for G2. They needed it. They needed something. First step forward into the game for G2. But how stressful. How much of a struggle. Good double from Monacy, but a better double. An all-important double kill from Hunter. Turn of the corner. Flashbang. It just misses its mark. It does not bounce the way he would have wanted. A missed lineup for Nico. Add that to his kill total of zero. Tough game. Tough start. Unforced error, but they do recover it. Smoking window again. Twist heads over to the connector position to play off with Rops. They've got a doubled angle. Rops not being aggressive, that means JKS will move up inside of the A site instead, and Monacy goes to middle with an AWP that has a direct counter, the antithesis of Brokey watching off from the corner of Catwalk. Again, G2 just shuffle around mid-presence. Utility in mid, they've shown it. Back towards the A bomb site. Alexi B with a MAC-10. This time it's Hunter lying wait in Palace. Rops and Twist, what a powerful duo to have at the center of the map. They can be everywhere all at once, it seems like. Flash is over, quick peeks. JKS uncertain as to what needs to be deployed. Smoke is at the ready. He can quick switch back to it. He knows that they'll likely mullet off this position. There it is, but he needs to keep the gun up because they're going to come around the corner. He's missed the shots. And hardly damage as well. Jack still stays with 74. Lexi B on 65. But Rops absolutely does take the ball for the moment. He goes on the board. He's going to double it up there as well as he finds Twist. And you better hope he arrives because that's exactly what G2 need. But he's gone in this round as Kerrigan comes back in. Another multi for Kerrigan. And it's all down to Broki. He finds Modesty just in time before he tried to recover and get the ball planted. There's still time to do so. 17 seconds. Jax has to go back for it, and that means he is occupied. He is committed to a set position, and Broki can approach as he pleases. AWP pre-scope. He knows he's going to go back for it. Texas, but he's not ready for it. Snapped away too soon, and Jax gets the second in a row for G2. What a timing on that peak from Jax, just as the crosshair of the AWP shifts away from that exact position. Tough. You got to admire, though, Nico. We've, we've said his name. We've called him out a couple of times for the zero kills. He gets a double kill there that's absolutely massive, and you got to admire that he just goes back to it. He has that killer instinct. This first kill here, he gets that one's easy. He sees the peak from Twist, and he comes back for it. He knows he's got a fight that he likes. Absolutely perfect. And Jax with a big boy clutch. Five round lead for FaZe. They're back to pistols. G2 have found a way to chip down this lead and hopefully close the gap. Hunter. Now they're rolling with it. Seems to be momentum is very much the case in this series. And he's got three looking for an anti-eco ace. Does get caught off by Brokey, who has the pistol inside of the window room and popped out late after he cleared the angle. But Monacy now has that information. Oh my goodness. Brokey just took the AK and assassinated Monacy with it. I'm not necessarily sure they can actually still win this, but this would be huge if they can find Nico. There's no kit, there's no armor. Oh, he's, oh he's Nico didn't see him. See him. He is looking at, he is staring this way. He's considering the possibility, but it doesn't matter. Oh my goodness. Brokey may have missed out on the last one ever so slightly, having looked away at the last possible second, but he could steal this one back. He's got three already. They know Jax is in the B bomb site. That's why Twist hasn't moved. He doesn't know how to actually make it into this bomb site to make the retake doable. There's the kill. There's the kill. Remember, no kits though. Alexi, he just has to play for time. The bomb is his teammate, and they're gonna back away. They're gonna back away. He's done it. He's just held his nerve long enough. But what a round from FaZe. What a powerful round. Almost clutching victory from the jaws of defeat here in round number 10. And they get away with two powerful weapons as well, an AK-47 and an AWP snatched off the dead bodies of G2 players. Definitely boosts the economy right back in there. Favor almost, because you can break down G2 now. Three rounds in a row, three T rounds in a row as well, very important. 
As the trend of this series seems to be, it's all CT. No, but remember, remember too, we said, because it had been 17 rounds straight, or excuse me, 19 rounds straight, going back to the first map for FaZe. Nothing is going to feel comfortable at any point, and you have a round like this, where you get the opening two kills, you have a five on three against unarmored pistols, and it comes all the way to that point that you almost lose it. It takes so much of your economy away. That is a blow to confidence. There's a certain element of victory in that round for FaZe. Still with the full round lead. MAC-10 on Jax, MAC-10 on Monacy, MAC-10 on Hunter. They don't buy fully all the way down. That might be their undoing, so a special strategy coming up, a little bit of a game plan here. Usually these weapons like this indicate some kind of a bust towards the V bomb site. Get those MAC-10s out into the open, wrapping around the bomb site with speed that the rifles cannot contain. Through the flames. Monacy doesn't seem to mind. He's got it inside, MAC-10. Straight money, Monacy, as he tries to add to that. Team kill from Jax actually gets him as he jumped in through the smoke trying to find the angle onto Twist, but, or excuse me, onto Kerrigan, but Roki's still in this with the AWP and the ball now down inside of the site. This is an awkward situation to suddenly find themselves in. Yeah, all the MAC-10s go down. I mean, that, that, those are the ones that are trying to make space for you, trying to actually overrun the bomb site and keep the defenders occupied while the AK-47s can pick them off with clean fights as they choose. This is... Disastrous for G2. Nico's gonna go down inside of the spam as well. Never able to get into a position. Now, small detail as well. That defensive Molotov that's thrown in the middle of the rush, Monacy runs all the way through it. He actually tanks like 50 HP of damage. There's supposed to be a smoke to put that one out during the round. I don't think he had the angle to drop it properly. And what a clean defense. Helped out, ooh, by Jax. You're right, maybe, maybe. That's unlikely that he would have found the kill. Yeah, he was airborne at the time. Did have a MAC-10, but... Look, you gotta take those shots. You can't really blame him for that situation. You're always gonna try and go for a kill, even at the expense of your teammate at times. Just unfortunate that he couldn't follow it up and avenge that situation. So this one, 27 seconds. Alexi B, and I think is not even considering it, wants that AK, because go back to that last round, so expensive. They break them right here and now. I, they're not fully broken. That's kind of the benefit of dropping down to those MAC-10s. They'll still be able to muster up a buy G2 if they wanted, and a pretty decent one at that, I think. I think they'll probably have at least, at bare minimum, three rifles, three AK-47s, if they wanted, if they choose to go for it. But certainly, it's put the economy in a really, really stressful, tenuous position. Five-round lead. Phase looking good. Up eight to three. Round 12 coming in. Does G2 want to take a timeout and call things over? Because they are going to buy into it. They are going to invest everything they have left into this one single round. AK-47 dropped over to Nico, who drops a little back into return, and it's stronger than I would have expected. Three AK-47s. Not a lot of utility, though. Kerrigan with smoke. On either side of middle for protection, Alexi B, he's gonna walk to right, direct up catwalk on this. Expecting there to be a boost, expecting there to be something that they're playing behind on this. But Kerrigan's gonna do the same thing down below him. This is an interesting angle for each to find, and he runs too soon. Sound gives it away, Alexi turns back, Kerrigan never knew, and that means now he's gonna go for more, but Rob's able to pick out, take him down, twists. He couldn't help in that situation because there's so much smokes down on top of the ace site. He has to turn and take off and hold the attack as they've lost the CT stairs as well. Rops again will work back inside of the site and it's all on to Monacy. Yeah, one versus three. They know his position as well. Oh, good shot, good shot, but the Molotov forces his hand way quicker than he would have. And nine to three. Phase continue to roll in these grand finals. And now the money's gone. Now you have that economy situation that is just no fun. Nicely done from JKS, just playing it passively, grabbing a pair of kills, not going down himself. Rops and Twists, they are working together in tandem very well at the middle of the map. This is so, so dangerous. Now you put Broki there with the AWP, gonna get smoked out. G2 again, forced to try and find an answer. KS timing, smoke still down. He knows that there was only so many opportunities for him to go back over. They spotted him. They spotted him. Props. 
His head shows JKS didn't see the cross because as he transitioned back, it's exactly when they snuck through, so that's a bit of a misplay. It's gonna cost them as well as Kerrigan falls, and they've got the advantage, although not by much if you consider the HP, but they have the man advantage for G2. Bomb plant, nothing watching CT stairs. They're late to come around the corner, so they'll get away with it. That's a planet for anyone to admit. They do have a player in connector. This is gonna be really, really tough to hold on to it. Utility coming out for the phase side of things. Here we go. Twist has the first. Brokey with another. All of a sudden it's down to two. And remember, Hunter can't do anything from that position. It's all on Jax. He's gone down and the round is over. As soon as they get on the defuse, they don't even need the kill. The 10th round, phase it, double digits. Back with three of their own after conceding that many. And we get to rounds. 14, nearing the end of the half. 20 will be a factor on potentially both sides, to be fair with the buy. I think phase will be completely fine, given that Brokey still has 74.50 after the full buy. They've got the double up set up this round as well, but it's a little bit tighter for the G2 side of things. Look, we, we saw phase uh, a tough first half on Inferno, obviously stand up to the task of making a comeback happen. We're about to see if G2 has that same fortitude at the moment. <laughs> yes, they could. Rops with a deep, deep angle in towards Palace. He could negate Nico right out of the gate. Flashbang out, Rops hears the bounce, goes back for the peak, and there it is. Had to be an instant headshot, and it's not. Nico brings him down to 48, but a five on four in the favor of FaZe. Hunter in the hall with Jax. I haven't seen them actually have too much success toward the middle position. As you mentioned, Twists and Rops just playing it so well. This time it'll be a crossfire set with Kerrigan. With Rops on that second op, that's the change in call, and Twist's actually being very passive right now. Giving up Catwalk entirely, he's rotated over toward the B site where Brokey is, which means mid-access is essentially granted to G2 in this situation, Alexi B. Bit more utility toward Connector. They've got the boost in the corner as well. The nade, Kerrigan, not gonna spot out Jax, and that's exactly the angle they were waiting for. They needed it. The equalizer, 4 on 4, that opens up the middle portion of the map. Alexi gonna jump over a near miss from Brokey. That would have been massive. Still another op to contend with inside of the 8 site. They know it though. That's the player that got the opening kill. Rops had found Nico in Palace. They know his position. Utility is streaming out. They know nobody can come through the murder hole. They know nobody can come to jungle. It's JKS who's found. A solid position ripped away. And Rops gets aggressive. He gets assertive. And Modesty's gonna have to deliver now. You know, there's now the double-off setup situation in play. Rocky can't find the shot through the box. Monacy planting with the AWP will fall off and try and immediately look for an angle, and he will get it as well. Twist through the smoke, gives himself up. No response yet from either of the two CTs remaining. And it's a double-off retake situation against that of Monacy and Alexi B. Hunter each on AKs. Monacy might do it all himself. Rocky stuck inside the corner is uncertain as to whether or not they're going to try and surround him and take this gun down. It looks certain to be a fourth round now for G2. Hunter doing exactly that. Will confirm he's still in the corner. Gets tagged up through the box, but finishes him off. Great round from Monacy. Even holding his nerve, it looked like he was going to go for a repeat. I'm certain someone on the team called both the both were ops. So he just tucked himself into the bombsite boxes, waited for his moment to strike. Great opening from Jax. That's a tough position to find and clear out. Good kill on a JKS that allows them to secure the plant and his teammates take it from there. Monacy takes it from there. 10 to 4. Single up for the phase side of things. Still just the one kid on Kerrigan as he drops down to an SMG. Solid buy, solid advantage. And again, Nico just misses the mark. That's a kill you give him probably 99 out of 100 times. Sneaking in though. Above the smoke. Oh, he spotted the gun barrel. He saw, oh, but he's looked away. He thought maybe he was transitioning toward the window. Instead, he'll look back and it's a tag. It must have clipped through the wall. Yeah, just barely unlucky for Monacy. As you can expect, this boost over the top of the box. Or excuse me, not the boost, but just the position. Over the top of the smoke. Oh, okay, why not? Give it to him. Give it to him to get him back in the game. G2 would desperately love this fifth round, and Hunter's gonna lurk up. It's a two on four, but there's still an element of danger because Twist isn't gonna expect it, but he recovers in time. And Monacy, it's the final round. You're gonna go for it, but he's only got four health. Oh, fast flicks, goes out that time, just had to go for a straight peak. HP's low, but it doesn't really matter. AWP, and I mean that on both sides because Monacy obviously has four. Time than that, though. Kerrigan down below. They've completely triangulated the position that the bomb 
is currently sitting. I don't think he's aware of it. Jumping in, and Kerrigan's gonna look up. He can hear him, and he'll finish him off. We've got the exact same scoreline we did on Inferno, but this time it's FaZe well in the lead. Can G2 pull off the same kind of events to come back? We'll take a break and find out. People are getting a little bit shaky. Let's fucking go, boys. Let's go, boys. Same let's go. Come by, okay? Yeah, let's go. You so bad. Suck. All along. Flash playground. Flashing mid. I think the start of four guys be. Push push B. B. No, no, think, push. Yeah, I think the start. Are you guys going long or no? I'm gonna fake going B to soon, okay? I'm gonna fake B now. Yeah, jump. Yeah. Rock, rock, rock! Deep, deep, maybe long. Shoot, deep, deep. Go back, go back, go back, go back. No response there from Shiro on the 4v5 advantage. They accelerate towards A. I'll oh, fucking push. Sign, sign, sign. Hold him, hold him. Sign off. Long, long, long. Still sign. Alright, track, 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 track. Oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. I'm pushing, but I don't know. The other. Alexi's got him covered as well. Good find towards Catwalk. Montesi's looking for more because he knows he's got his teammate to cover the push, and he's gonna deliver one more stellar headshot. The awareness as well to find that kill on Twist after battling with Kerrigan for so long for positioning. He gets the two, and then Jax gets JKS because he had to go back for the bomb eventually. And now we've got a fifth for G2. They start off the second half in a much better way. All right, maybe you look for that star power in an unlikely place here. Young stud who's been so good on this stage throughout the quarterfinals, throughout the semifinals. Delivers three big kills here. Jax even able to find one through that smoke and the final kill, obviously, on a JKS. 11 to 5. G2 started in the second half in the right way. Second round by Deagles, a P250 on Kerrigan. Some nades to play with as well. That deep Molotov is probably making JKS very uncomfortable. Oh, he couldn't see him over the flames. Thankfully, Jax is there. Brokey's found one in mid. Oh my goodness, Twist. Oh yes! Nico as well, Jax drops. The two on the Deagle brings it level as Alexi B is trying to lurk and find out where the information can be for the CTs. MP9, they call that murder hole for a reason. Don't dare go through it at P250. That range, no question, you hit the headshot. How does G2 want to get back into this round? How do they want to rotate to make this, this happen? Because now that there's so much silence on the map, they know the bomb's planted today, but they actually have no information of where Kerrigan is. They have no information of where Twist is. This is a blind two-on-two -two retake. Twist is already waiting for the flank. Well, he's looked away wrong time. He expected it. He's ready for it, and he then doubted himself, and it costs them. They'll get the round back just like that, Jason. Yeah, just like that. Made it look easy after I built that one up. Good on G2, but man, I, look again, the conversation, nothing is coming easy to G2 at the moment, but this is the same position FaZe Clan was in in the last map. G2 are just gonna have to replicate it. And so far, two players alive here, they get to build up some money. With the plant, the question becomes, how much pressure does Kerrigan want to apply early on in this map? The plant's gonna help them buy again if they'd like to. No, that time didn't mess up the flash. Queuing back to the first half when they didn't quite get the peak right, and it's Hunter again that gets the kills. Twist nearly was ready for that. He certainly considered it, but the timing just didn't seem right to him. And great shot by Alexi B jumping through. It was a pretty quick timing, I think, for that kind of a flank as well. So well played. Well, we have our answer. Kerrigan wants to apply a hell of a lot of pressure on a G2's defense. He knows the economy is going to be low after that kind of a round. Buys right back up into it. It's not a perfect buy, but it's got everything they need to deliver a really powerful body blow here to G2 on Mirage. Nico waiting. Two kills all game, that was in one round. He's only had one round that he's found frags. That is not the Nico we know, and he's gonna try and sneak through smoke this time and make amends for it. As he gets closer to the front of the site, JKS has Jax. May not be done with that either. 
They have no more utility. Actually, excuse me, Brokey just picked up one smoke. He's gonna toss it out a little bit late, but that re-execute got him in decent positions. Look at the potential lurk from Twist at top mid. This could be everything. Excuse the bomb glitch. That green is not the bomb. In fact, it's in the hands of Kerrigan right now. Hunter, bit of an exchange toward the top of middle. That'll force Twists away from it. He's gonna rotate back over and try and join the rest of his team for the backside of the site. Nico, good for one more, but he's down immediately. JKS the trade. The Galil doing work, and it's Brokey from way downtown to take out Monacy as Hunter holds. Crossover, that's information, but JKS couldn't swing because they had jungle covered off. Hunter's still alive and well, and Twists, the man who rotated back, has two low HP players to clutch against, but no vision against them as the smoke been deployed. He has Bomb picked up and can try to maneuver this. The time is certainly in his favor to do so. 27 seconds, he'll plant safely. Nade to go over the top will tickle him at best. Oh, I take that back. Did significant damage as well as the spam through the box. He gets taken down to 40 HP, and he has to try to reposition with the AK. It's a Lexi B coming from the same angle that Hunter did last time, and it's a one and done if they time this. As long as they don't line up, Twist will be immediately found and taken down. They'll even elevate their positions. Twist trying to use the gap to see through. Spots him, sees him. Easy find of the kill. Looks down, Hunter not looking the right way, and Twist has both. The Canadian kid in Katowice has 12 for phase. That's such an incredible clutch. What a heads up play to look above for the information. G2 could not react fast enough. And with the low HP, they had to go for a little bit of trickery. They had to go for the long rotation through T-spawn. It just doesn't pan out. Everything up to this point is G2 clawing themselves back into a losing situation. And Twist takes all that success away, puts it in the dumpster. 12 to six. And a good bold call, knowing the economy was in a precarious position from Kerrigan. Gives FaZe a huge advantage in this second half, in this second map. What are you supposed to do? Two scouts, three deagles. Looking to deal some damage and have some of these players be able to mop it up. Monacy is going to have the angle towards top A ramp. Escapes with his life down to 19 HP. That's gonna make it really tough for him to work up the courage for a repeat. Balls off into the site as well. They need these kills. They've got him where they want him. Nico with one, but he needed more. It did need more. Twist puts him down immediately after, but at least he's starting to get rolling, finding some space for G2. Jax. Jax on the box. And it's Twist who's now coming alive. Three kills in this round as well as he gets Jax down as immediately after taking out Monacy. So Bomb gets planted. Alexi B and Hunter. Twist has that. He's on for another ace. His second four kill round in this game. Hunter is, I think, going to hide this time as he's going to rotate away. Deagle only to work with. Might want to save the armor as well as that hand cannon and try and find his seventh round of the next for G2. Well, what, a t what can you say? G2... Needing to find an avenue back into the game. Next round, is it going to be any kind of a pretty buy either? Twist is starting to take over the map. He's starting to take over the series. Remember, the, the, I mean, this is this is two maps he's putting together in, in an incredible fashion. He was the one player on phase at the start of Inferno that was delivering him, that was keeping them alive, that was buying time for his teammates. Now on Mirage, with everyone kind of marshaled behind him and having their support firing on all cylinders, Twist has just taken over. Great entries here in this round, a phenomenal clutch of the previous one. Working magic on the big stage. Seven round lead for FaZe. Four kills in the previous round for Twist. It's worth noting that Alexi B only has five more ADR than Nico, despite having six more kills, so. This has been a very, very tough game for G2. I mean, we kind of brought it up, like how do you mentally reset from, from such a catastrophic opening map at a grand final on this stage? How do you do it twice? Yeah. That's the bigger thing, because you didn't come out and do that. Now you're gonna be potentially, if you can't collect it in the next few rounds here, you're gonna be down two maps, one away from a loss, and that's, I, I don't know if you can. Yeah, you can forget getting deleted out of a map if that's what's gonna happen here on Mirage, but you cannot forget dropping such a massive lead. Now, G2 have a real chance here. Stack at this bomb site, it's the weaponry they're lacking. Three players, all all gonna go down. Twist again gonna step up, being aggressive inside of the bomb site. Nico has found another good dink at range, but Brokey won't fall. 14 to 6. Phase just two rounds away. Three T rounds versus the two only so far for G2, those starting rounds that they got. So starting to see now potentially some more T sided action. It was starting to look like a pretty one sided defensive affair in this final. And I know that's certainly again been a point of conversation with the M4A1S. Economy in the dumps. 
They've invested everything as they have to, G2. They have the Op and Monacy's hands, those M4s across the board to surround it. And he's gonna get aggressive in towards Palace. Peeking in, nobody's home, nobody's here. Jax to defend with him. Nico to main presence in window room. Here comes the hit. Kerrigan not wasting any time. Utility flying over. Jungle is going to be smoked off. Top con is going to be smoked off. Jax is going to be the initial point of contact. Molotov, he held onto it. He didn't drop it. A little bit dangerous. They're gaining space. That flashbang actually holds him back, but Kerrigan's in. Jax recovers in time, but the Molotov didn't fully hold things off. He goes down. Modesty's still alive, and this position is so strong. So strong, but a Molotov will keep him back, which means he cannot combat with Nico right now. That flash timing gave Jack so much space as JKS is gonna try to at least buy time as well. CT sided smoke. They wanna try and take the site back before the bomb gets closer to this. Let's Nico get a bump and leveling up his game now as he goes above this cloud to find JKS. Rops couldn't get the response and he still knows. Monacy was there. What he doesn't know is that Alexi B is also behind him. He's got the kill easily on the M4 and it's just twist remaining and I don't think this time he's gonna have quite the same tantrum against G2. Yeah, you can see that position from Modesty, it might be the one thing missing from that hit from FaZe was somebody in Palace to try and take care of that because if is gonna be comfortable, stays up there and you know it, look at the way it just freezes the attack. There's no route forward because you know at any time he can pounce, you have to keep eyes, you have to keep a body on it. And just the positioning alone makes that defense so strong. 14 to seven. This round is huge. This round is everything for G2. They finally got phase plan to buy in a way that there's no money left in the bank afterwards. So if G2 can win this, they get a bit of a reprieve. They get to close the gap in the scoreline, potentially, as long as they don't fall prey to Deagles. But they've got to get there first. And a loss here with the money that G2 has themselves built in the bank. Good response from Hunter. Monacy forced off the angle. He goes back and makes sure they can't get mid control. Absolutely right, though. Economy is certainly a factor. <laughs> this is this round is the difference between G2 being able to start and build upon this potential comeback or phase, just perhaps taking map and going up 2-0 in the grand finals. Rob's just working in. Ooh, did Jack spot? He did. He sprayed in, so the shoulder shows. Hunter forward of that smoke takes Kerrigan out with ease. Now keep in mind, Kerrigan was the one on the P250, but nonetheless, it's a two-man advantage. JKS spot Nico going reverse fire because he certainly has the crosshair placed there, not wanting to move at all. He's waiting for his chance to fire in that direction, take his head clean off, and Rops doesn't want to clear it either because he knows there's vision from jungle. Now, JKS would be able to swing on that trade potentially. That's now gone. But the Jax is also still in shadow. Now he goes. Yeah, the information was definitely there. They know Nico's in position. He's going to take him out. JKS got Hunter. He came through the smoke. That forces Jax's hand. And he's, he's alone. Still... He's alone. There's no one here to help him. He's got to do everything. Oh, Brokey misses a chance. Tries to get creative over the top ropes. Oh, he goes down as well. Jax. Oh, you hero. So massive. He got the bomb out of that situation. You're right. They knew he was there the whole time, and they couldn't do anything about it. Low HP as well. No mistakes for Jax in that situation. What a way to step up. 14 to 8. G2 is just six rounds back, and they've got what they've wanted. They've at least passed the first hurdle, because the map could have just ended right there in this round. They've survived a little bit longer as they try and build into the comeback. Much in the same way of phase on Inferno, trying to replicate it. Back to Glocks for the phase attack. Might have saved the game himself, Jax. Twist forced off immediately inside of the apartments. Molotov goes down toward the kitchen. Bit of a kitchen fire, but Hunter's going to go up around and knowing that they're going to be coming back out of those halls, try and do something with it. Kerrigan has his knife out. Kerrigan has his knife out. So oh dear. Could have been a free one. Instead, it's farming money now for Hunter. Hunter's flexing in this game, and we brought him up at kind of at the start of the Grand Finals where he's just kind of overshadowed by some of the bigger names on the squad, but he's having a phenomenal tournament. And man, is he being a force to be reckoned with for G2. They needed someone. And he's filling that role very, very impressively. Alexi's over towards Catwalk. The rest of Faye's gonna march up towards the B-bomb. So they don't have the bomb with them because they realize Hunter could just be chilling on top of it. So why not just go see if you can find some kills? Maybe it'll be unexpected. 
Monacy, ooh, talk about timing. Talk about horrible timing. Shouldn't be too much of a loss. Uh oh, but that miss could be everything. Twist finds him. That's the soul P250. Two on three. And it's not necessarily the win because the bomb is so far away, but G2 has no idea, and Hunter just doesn't care. Right into the smoke. He's gonna go down, but he's done his job. Twist hits that no scope in the smoke, and that thing is a very different round. No chance to get inside, but now you've got the man who's more familiar with the weapon back on it, sneaking in. Jax was ready for that. Tries to get unorthodox again. Second round in a row, and we are now at 14 to 9. Still, the theme of this is just nothing easy for G2. FaZe is making every round stressful, every round difficult. This is a round of four unarmored Glocks and an unarmored P250, and they found a chance to maybe turn it, but they definitely did economic damage. Three kills. Brutal to what G2 is trying to build into. Double Ops, Modesty, and Nico with the other one. And this has been another point of conversation. So much of this team is focused on Nico for so long, for his entire tenure in the squad. Historically, when he loses a little bit of confidence in that rifle, the switch to the AWP has had mixed results. Hunter. Let's have JKS. Oh my Good God. movement, though. Good mechanics to get around the corner. Double nade. Oh, the second one didn't go far enough. Just barely didn't get around the corner because he was a dead man if it did. He's on 18, and they're going to try and spray him through the wall instead. A little bit late. You got to love watching it. Hunter's playing such a dangerous game. There's a fine line between being aggressive and assertive and overextending, and I think he might have been flirting with it there. Gets away with his life, but very easily with nade in hand, could have been dropped. Quiet on the map. JKS gonna rotate all the way back around towards T-Spawn. Mid control for phase. They have presence, but not showing it just yet. The fact that Nico's gone for the secondary op, I think speaks volumes about the game he's having. Just needs something to get kills. He'll hold it middle with it, but they'll put a catwalk smoke out that now deters the fact that he has the gap in the smoke above the one at connector, above middle. Although that one now gone means he's got a clean shot on Kerrigan and nearly the doubled situation. Honestly, not quite able to strike and get the second one, but he's turned his attention back toward A main, and that's where damage is being dealt by Jax. JKS down to just 18, and he is sitting in the open. He's timing. I don't want to swing on this either. The flash out. If Jax goes, remember, he won them around single handedly in this position. They're going to be staring at him, but again, he wins that battle, and he's not done there. He's having a phenomenal time. Oh, Over no. On the A site, but Twist somehow turns it around, and it's still a two on two. It's the cousins, but Nico with the AWP. He wants that palace peak. He's desperate for it. He's praying for it. Eight seconds on the clock. Bomb's gonna move into position. There's the peak. They're gonna try and get the plant down. They tap it. They want the fight. Oh, Nico, 1v1. You gotta survive. Twist pushing forward, and he can't get oh, it. Oh, he got it. No, you, did he get no, it? No, he didn't get it. Oh, my God. Round's over. He jumped up. I thought that bullet hit. I thought he had him in that situation. That was so close. <laughs> desperately jumping to avoid the spam, and Twist almost read that. I think he's hoping, oh. too, if you're turning the corner, maybe you shoot my feet in one second instead of my face. Oh, 10 situations. 14 to 10. G2, they're doing it. They're coming back. Four rounds straight. 28 kills on Twist, 21 on Brokey. It's 24 on Hunter to lead the way for G2 and Monacy at 15. Jax at 16. Look, you got to give a shout out to Jax too. His performance in this position in like at least three rounds throughout this half has saved the day. A, 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 just phenomenal work. Where does this last bullet go? I thought he nailed it when he snapped it. Oh, he was just behind when he came back down. That was so close. Yeah, I, like Nico has no idea that he's not able to actually swing around that position with that much time, right? So he's jumping to avoid that. It actually exposed him and gave the opportunity to Twist to be able to find the kill. Oh, it's getting dicey. Mere inches in some of these decisions. We saw it earlier with that duel between JKS and Hunter at the start of the previous round. AK-47 on Twist. G2 chance back, equaled by that of the phase as they trade supports, but it was certainly a silent G2 auditorium for a while. Alexi B starting off, they have the opening kill in this round as well. Twist taken out by Bonacy, and Hunter back out with the aggression, will take down Brokey as well. Now this is interesting because the comeback before was battling for overtime. They still are in this for the win, G2, and FaZe certainly have to be well aware of that. JKS, undetected. Uh-oh. Shouldn't be able to change the fortune of the rounds. That might, that might. Okay, an opening, one shot from this Deeg. And this round turns on its head. Uh, just one more high-pressure situation for G2 to recover from. 
AK, and does he hit? Okay, I thought he was going to go for the jump, using all of the movement mechanics to get back toward that bomb because it is down on the catwalk. That's the one part of this. Rops has to designate time just to go get it. I thought maybe Jax knew that he had JKS pinned down in this corner. Maybe he's second guessing himself. Maybe he thinks maybe I took an eye, my eye off it for a bit too long. Nico, the swing for information. He's got it. He can't hit the shot, but at least he's got intel. Oh, oh he misses another one. That's not great. That's not great either. And look at JKS. Remember, they forgot this position. They forgot that he was here. Jax is looking for it. What is JKS peak? Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Triple kill for JKS. Oh, my goodness. Talk about a standing that has stood up in these situations. Nico's lost, his nightmare is back, and it's FaZe Clan on 15. What a way to clutch around. And Rops running the B, hits a stunner, and Nico missed two. Someone better sign JKS when this event is over. I'll he's... sign him, I'll sign him right, I'll build a team around him. Yeah, you might as well. A gap in the defense, I don't know how he slips by, but those two kills are massive, and two monumental misses for Nico. Wow, when was the last time you saw Nico off this long in an entire series, or I should say game? Oh, look at Kerrigan. Furl, this is fast. Kerrigan out. Jax again, though, using the ladder to perfection. G2 might escape the pace. Kerrigan, you're right. He wants to put the absolute nail in the coffin and just bloodbath G2 on this last round, but it doesn't work. It backfires, and it's Rops versus four. Oh, Rops is going to back away. G2 survived again. Look, that, that's not always a call from an in-game leader. That kind of a rush at 15-10 in this fashion to end the game right here, right now. That's always going to be a call that's judged based off the outcome it delivers. But I love it. I love everything about that call. Deliver it quickly. Go swift. They almost make it work. I think if Kerrigan turns that corner, gets that kill clean, I think that hit might actually work. It's gone the other way here. Rops was the man who... Had an incredible ace on Inferno that got it to overtime. Wouldn't be an ace this time, but I would say it's almost more difficult. Hunter's gonna shut him down. Money is back in the bin for FaZe. Not tragically, because JKS still has enough. They can force out on this, but it is 15 to 11. G2 need four more rounds. Five in a row to force OT. We had it on the first map. This defense has been rock solid outside of the P250 from God in the hands of JKS. Flashbang out, Nico wants a fight, wants a peek. Gets a little bit of damage dealt on towards Twist. There's two AK-47s in hand for FaZe. They've only spotted the Deagle so far. Nico holds above the smoke inside connector, JKS. Snuck underneath it so far, but not spotted. Covered off as well, JKS. They had a second player behind the box. Jax will start it off. Rops goes down. Defense with the advantage once more. Can't be blamed giving JKS the AK in this situation, the game he's having. Transition from Nico as well to the window, and he's made no mistake to find twists, but it does give his position up to the AK in return, and JKS puts him on three HP, so Nico's gonna scurry away and not give his life up that easily. Modesty to hold on, off at range, Jax again. That same impactful position to keep some space between the attacking phase members and the Alper. Kerrigan's gonna look for this though. JKS has come up connector as well. Not a lot of utility, and there's too many angles to clear. The shadow shows, oh Jax, he gets launched off the ladder. This can't be real. This cannot be real. A missed shot from Modesty. Nico's low as well. Thank God there's no nades. Thank God there's no Molotov, but how do you get this bomb planted? Here comes the swing. Oh, this has disaster written all over it. Kerrigan cannot connect the shots. 10 seconds to get this bomb planted. More utility being spent. Nico's gonna swing wide. He's gonna spam it down. Finding a way to have impact, and that's the round done, although they could still lose weapons. JKS is gonna bug out and go home. Three more needed for OT. And he's found as well. The AK gone. We've got a game. Three between them now. How close was that? Kerry
Kerrigan hits either of those on the peak, yeah. he's watching because he knows Monesty's behind ticket. He knows he's going to peak with the AK. And with how quick he is, you don't want to have to flick back to him. Doesn't consider that Nico also has an angle. You got to give props. That's a, that's a really, really ambitious swing from Nico. But understanding the time left in the round, all he needed was the one kill. Didn't have to make any miracles happen. Just needed to stop the plant from going down. Nico's up to 13 now. Monesty in the window. Op. Trying to control the situation. There's no window smoke. He might have a chance for it. A crossover with the smoke still in position. Kerrigan the first to get to the boxes. As Monesty could do nothing of it. Nico still watches down below. Shots out, Nico. Sees underneath. Certainly upped his pace in the last few rounds. Caught up to Alexi B. Jack's not far off them now, but... Individual kills no longer matter at this point. Yeah, but the bomb is alone. If Jax finds that, regardless of how successful everything else is, that's gonna be a tough situation to recover. And there it is. That's the bomb down. Twist is gonna go down next as the smoke clears. Nico doesn't need to do much more. He knows they're coming out. Jax comes back for it. Of course he does, because why not? Good shot from Rops and a follow-up, but surely, surely Rops doesn't have one more special moment in him. It's time. He's got 35 seconds. He grabs this bomb. He can go either direction. It's a one on two. 46 HP only, but we know how accurate Rops can be. Headshots would suffice. Throws his own bit of utility toward the jungle position, and they are segregated. They're split. They're not sure where this goes. This is an isolation. It's Hunter that you're going against, though, and he has been spectacular on the map. Yeah, but do you tap or do you stick the plant? 13 seconds. Tap. Spots! Now knows the situation. Molotov has to get him off the angle, but it's eight seconds. He's got to get this kill now, right now, and he's not going to get it. Hunter has it instead, and we have a 13th round G2. <laughs> the slimmest of margins. Oh, I cannot believe Jax came back for another fight. What a badass. 15-13, two more rounds for G2. Oh, Rops. He had the time, he had the space. Chris shooting, but Hunter has just outplayed him here. Well done, tough fight to win for both players. Forced out by utility. Look at what it means to him. Round 29. No easy rounds, remember, even with the Tech Nines, even with the P250. Guess who's back? Guess who's back again. Nico coming out for the action, and Jax, one more time, can he step up? Finally, they'll eradicate him from underneath the shadow position. Rops needs to hold, though. Knows that Nico was toward connector Brokey. That's a desperate plant. Oh my, in the open, Nico's not gonna swing it, he will now. Just barely in time, that is a bold play. For them to try and go for that, no utility. And no one to hold his hand while he tried to put it down. Rops will sit behind Box and wait for a peek from CT. Had to do something, they couldn't cover him from all the different angles. That's a very, very tough position to be in. Monesty's so low, so keep an eye on that. If, if Nico, he's not aware of the timing coming from underpass Kerrigan. Oh, this would be massive. He's just out of his range, just out of his glimpse. Now he knows, now he seems the elbow, but Hunter's got him from behind, protecting the back of Nico. Round 30, of course, they've brought it all the way back. Same situation, 11-4 at half. FaZe did it on Inferno, and G2 dishing it straight back to them incredible series it's delivering in every regard it's the psychological part of it that's that's just overwhelming to even think about we said it if g2 couldn't come back from the last loss yeah you go down 2-0 in a best of five you're out of this and now they're doing the exact same thing to face clan pretty fitting for a matchup that really didn't feel like it had a favorite coming into it probably one of the first grand finals in a long time where you didn't have a solid favorite going either way and some miraculous moments, not all of them individual, plenty of team heroics coming into play as well. And I'll tell you what, G2 has had to battle so hard to get back into this. Every round has been a struggle. Every play phase has made has been impactful. G2 have answered the bell each and every time. They only need one more. You can get Monesty in a position with a deep angle and B. You can actually rotate Alexi off, or, or you can use him for cover as you push up. Uh, the scariest thing as well is that Nico was out of this game completely, and they couldn't close it. Now you're seeing the confidence, the peaks through the smoke in the last round. He's up to 18 already. 
No one's aware of this play from Alexi. He's pushed all the way up. Monosi can now be mobile across the map. This is huge. What an aggressive play to make at 15-14. Sander defaults so far. Robs the palace smoke is gonna clear. They've gotta be careful. This position can be so deadly, so dangerous for a player as precise as Rops. Back to the hero play from Jax as well when it was 14 to eight. Guess where he's been pretty much every round since. Nico, easy for the first, but JKS is immediately on the trade. That forces Jax out, Robs. He's gotta go wider than that, but he's not sure where to fire. Hunter was in the open as well, and he does not get the man down below, and he has been a huge problem for them. It's Kerrigan, and wants to assist in him in doing so with the Molotov. That'll force him out into the open. Kerrigan gets the kill clean, but Monacy comes right back into the picture, and it's Kerrigan that has to hold it. He can't! Monacy's got overtime! How are we doing this again? How are we going the distance once more? You gotta give it up to him. What an incredible recovery. We were wondering if G2 would ever be able to come back from that first map disaster. Well, they've done it. Overtime's next. Stay with us. I think I'm up. I'm up. Uh, yeah. We're back. We are finally back, baby. Katowice comebacks, the name of the game, it seems. And today, we are getting dished from both sides as it's G2 this time that force out overtime 15-15 and could steal back Mirage from FaZe. In doing so, we'd be knotted up on level maps 1-1, one, one, best of five. And I said we'd need the distance of maps. I didn't know we were going to need every single round as well, Jason. Yeah, no, we get them all. It's, it's absolutely beautiful, but there's still more rounds to play here on Mirage G2. They have completed the comeback, but now they have to overcome everything that they failed at previously in the previous map. They have to actually win this game. Remember, FaZe made that huge comeback on Infernal, rattled off four in a row, and just ended it. Just closed it out as soon as humanly possible. G2 have to do the exact same... Well, they don't have to, but they'd love to do the exact same thing here. Here we go, back into the action after a short break. Counter smoke from Hunter as he's already covered off inside of the window. Twists. He's gonna work through it. Flashbang just to get lower in middle, but no one's seeing him and nothing to spot on either side as of yet. Nico's the one that's above. Hunter's got a gap. They didn't see this play last time in the B halls. Monacy and Alexi B have just gone back to it. Deep angle, gonna allow Alexi B to push up, but the real action is gonna be towards Nico. Attacking his position, oh, he loves that fight. He knows he had Twist frozen into the open, but he can't find the follow-up. Hunter's here to step into his position, but Rops is activated. Doesn't see Jax down below, but surely they have to expect this position. Surely they check it and they do JKS to clear it. Massive problem for them getting inside of the A site before Hunter back through the smoke, but Kerrigan over the top will deny him getting any momentum in the round. And we sit to a two on three with Alexi B already on the flank, Kerrigan. Staring at it, needs to trust his teammates and keep his eyes focused. He'll do exactly that, and it's all down to Monacy. AK this time starts it off by taking out Brokey. Incendiary to the firebox, lights it aflame to try and clear off one further angle by use of utility rather than weapon, and he'll head toward the site, knowing Kerrigan was out toward a main. Has he retreated? Has he gone all the way down Tetris? Robs! The back turn shows! He has the information for the last player, but Kerrigan has the shot instead! Can you believe it? Of all the players to take him down, Kerrigan, the in-game leader, the last remaining, and Modesty even knew his position. That's a great clutch attempt. A one versus three in overtime for Modesty, but brilliant hold from Kerrigan. You're exactly right, he almost glanced away, and man, if that flank had been impactful, that could have been all she wrote. 16-15, one round lead for FaZe, the one T-round that eluded them in the five of regulation. Remember, they got the one T-round in overtime, and Inferno as well, going four straight. T-rounds are the name of the game, that's a huge win for FaZe to start off the extra innings. Modesty back over toward B, this time up on top of the van, he'll hold with the AWP. He's gonna have a lot of bodies coming at him. He's got Brokey pinning him down. But remember, he's made this peek safely a number of times, not this one. 
Two rounds in a row, he got the peak that he wanted deep. Alexi B, all the pressure's on you. Where are you gonna go? Smoke down at the van. Plays around it. Kerrigan's found his feet from beneath it. And this T side, the pace has been picked up. JKS in middle to cut off any kind of rotation. I don't even know if it matters. I don't think it's gonna matter because there's no access into this bomb site. There's so much utility left for FaZe to hold on to it. And JKS gonna wrap around. Sometimes all you need is that reset. The halftime before overtime, giving them some space. They walk out, they line up. Hunter gets two. This round's not done, but guess who's behind them? JKS. The man from down under is gonna rise above as he walks in in the AWP. That's easy. Bye bye, Nico. And hello, Hunter. As he turns back, he's the only one that remains in a one on three. JKS will go down in this situation, but they've bought the space. And broke. he's got the kill. It's two in a row for FaZe. Oh, Montezzi gets just baited, lured into that peak because he was able to grab the angle so many times previously without spotting anyone. He never had to encounter Brokey in that kind of a battle. This time, punished for it. And G2 can just not get their back off this wall. Is there a case for JKS being the MVP? Not even statistically, but considering he steps into the box <laughs> at the start of this event. Yeah, emotionally. And he has to switch over and cover for Rain, given the circumstances, and he's playing this well on the stage with a team. Again, he's had, what, two weeks to play with. Yeah, you, you really got to admire what he's been able to do with this phase team throughout this tournament, standing in for Rain, standing in for Rops as well. He's been absolutely brilliant. Basically a contract event for JKS. He's getting one after this no matter what, surely. He said T rounds are the name of the game. Face have two in overtime. If G2 lets him sweep this opening half of OT, great flick, accurate as well, fast and on point. Stay five aside, damage dealt either way. Kerrigan comes out worse for wear on 16. Nico again, though, playing behind this smoking connector. We know how good he is in this position, if he can get supporting flashes as well, but Jax has pushed forward as he always is. And Monacy is not yet rotated around to the CT stairs to give him that flashbang, to give him a chance to peek through it, so Nico has to back away. That's so dangerous though. Nico's actually got to go through smoke to clear out window room for this boost. Jax falling, or JKS falling down, can't handle it. Good shot for Monacy as well. Five on three. G2 finally in a good position. But look at the HP. This can turn so quickly. And Jax has actually moved out of his little... I swear he's been playing underneath balcony pretty much this entire half, CT half, and now he's finally changed things up. So if Faze try and punish that, they'll get him anyways. Didn't even matter where he was playing. Shot out from Nico. He'll be immediately able to trade. Look at the HP though. Alexi B's on only 12. Monacy on 18. Kerrigan has the AWP. That'll certainly help his situation as Monacy fires. That gives Brokey a chance to reposition. Down goes Kerrigan, though. Hunter with a resounding headshot. Brokey, he spotted him out this time. He's gonna go back around with a pistol at that range. And G2 will at least get one CT round in overtime. We'll go 2-1 to make it a 17-16 scoreline. Still, you gotta be a little bit worried if you're G2. The first half was so difficult. And now it starts to feel so long ago, but you could barely find any success in that opening half of this game, of this map. Look at the flick here. Leg shot on the Kerrigan. He had to have been really bummed that he got tagged there. Beautiful stuff from Monacy and the USP to finish off the round. Magic number is 19, phase is two away, G2 is three away, and a timeout taken immediately to readdress this T side that they had no solution for in regulation. Now all of a sudden again, let's remind you, without your coach not able to be here on stage, you have to find some way to overcome this phase defense. Double off setup is going to be switched into as well. I don't think they saw that at all in the first 15 rounds. Op on Brokey. Op's going to be in the hands of Kerrigan as well. Kerrigan's definitely been a CT side and Op on this map. I know, we're digging well Yeah, we're digging way back into, into the history. Like, uh, <laughs> into the uh, archives. We're I'm dusting getting, them off. I'm getting old, so I'll just go back and live out my glory years again. No, it was <laughs> Sam, obviously, when he had Cajun B and Device on the team. They almost had a triple up setup at times, but he's gonna head toward B this time and leave window to Brokey as Nico works his way up aggressively on the AWP for the T side, not giving it to Monacy. He wants to be aggressive, Nico. Smoke in towards window room. Rops is gonna be blocked off, but feeling comfortable, not feeling a whole lot of danger, and obviously has a couple different plays he can make from this position. G2 starting to progress and control Catwalk. Rops now has two angles to consider. The thing is, will they actually consider him? Oh, good jump from Odyssey. Good information. What a transfer upwards as Rops falls back. Oh, no. One more. That's one too many. 
Holding his situation, though, it's gonna give Brokey a chance over toward B as he starts off well. Nico down. He's gonna get aggressive, get closer on the angle. No gap for the smoke, at least not close. There is certainly one above toward the window. Boost, Monacy up in this situation. This could catch off Brocky massively. Brocky's gonna have to be so, so perfect on his timing. Monacy aware of the timing of that smoke dissipating and considers looking downward as well. Quick check even to make sure connector's fine behind them. Yeah, but they need a mistake. They, they can't really do anything to find themselves an opening kill. They have the one Molotov on Monacy. They need a mistake. Good find from Jax. Twists all the while has been closing down the map, getting in behind them. He's going to work toward the apartments as well. That's going to double that position, make it harder to read in terms of retake. Molotov goes. That leaves Monacy in the open with utility rather than a weapon. And Jax down to JKS again, stepping up. 28 kills now for him. And it's one round from FaZe, taking a 2-0 lead in this series. So many angles in that bomb site, so impossible to clear. And you've got that deadly triangle. I mean... Player in dark, player in market, player up in the holes as well. That's so brutal. I cannot believe Rob's got a second kill. Look at this quick little jiggle peek as he pre-fires it. Boop. Beautiful stuff with six health. Two more chances for FaZe. They had five in regulation. Rob's this time getting a different position inside of mid with the protrusion smoke that goes beyond the end of the connector. He'll use the bench to try and see toward top middle. Didn't quite see the feet. He's been spammed as well. He's down to 25. Can't overextend and overstay as welcome as Hunter, therefore will walk out for free. Pretty patient on the map. Hunter has delivered so much for G2 in this game. He's been, at times, the one shining beacon of hope for G2. Oh, and he's got it again. Even with the initial dink, Molotov can block off the rotation. He's down very low, but what a dangerous pressure point to have. The rest of G2 is going to start to stream up, but great defensive utility to hold him off a little bit longer. Nico switched over to the Krieg, another change in weaponry. Can't find anything with that. And there's Brokey for one more. Again, Modesty is going to have to deliver something. Man down and two rounds behind. It's one to go for FaZe. Alexi B on 28, Monacy trying to walk back in. JKS will drop down behind the cinders so as not to be seen, but Alexi B's got position, he's got an angle, he's got ROPS. One thing he doesn't have with him to try and transition and change the map entirely right now is the bomb. Monacy still holding onto that, will be working in toward Tetris. And it's tough, they don't know where to put out this last smoke, they have no idea where Kerrigan's gonna come from, where that rotation is, they know they have to find JKS inside of this bomb site. They know his likely position. Monacy creeping up, they're gonna go contact. They're gonna go quietly, 15 seconds on the clock. The play has to be now. There's the smoke, there's the smoke. Monacy, oh, he takes him out, he's got another. 10 seconds, bomb being planted, but look at the plan. Catwalk, Kerrigan has one chance, one chance only! Oh, the bomb's down! Just barely got the play, and Kerrigan nearly shut that down despite it being inside of the smoke. And now he has to clutch this back, and Alexi B has the information. Kerrigan on the AWP will switch to the pistol. Do they know he's wounded? Do they know he's weak? Does Kerrigan know a pistol will do it? He's gonna spot him on Alexi B! Slide down and gets the headshot, and we're not done yet! Oh, my lord. Oh. It's become a game of milliseconds. Alexi B holds strong. A good clutch for G2's in-game leader. I thought Kerrigan had it. Oh, he's this is incredible. The bomb. Just still in the animation of letting it go. Even sees his leg before that peak, just can't land the shot. Alexi, immediate response. All right, one more round. It's phase 2-0 in maps, or it's a second overtime. Bonus C starts it well. Boost on the corner. They've not seen that yet. Rops thought he was safe. Far, far from. Congregation likes what they see. What an experience he's had. That's. I don't think anyone chanted my name when I was 16 years old. No. You weren't hitting shots like him. JKS. Strong position. He's a pop flash. The last one missed. This one's perfect. That one is absolutely perfect. Even with the dink, it doesn't matter. Alexi took his time transferring over the spray. A bomb site is open for the taking. Double overtime is on the cards. It's Brokey, Kerrigan, and Twist to recover. Double comeback. Phase is the second time they should have closed out the game, considering the scoreline we had. In regulation, bomb will go down. Twist does get jacks. Gives them a bit more space, a bit more hope in the round as Kerrigan will swap over to the M4 instead. He'll be lit ablaze, though. And 
Flays are getting lit ablaze everywhere at this point in time as well because Alexi bleeds, takes down Brokey, twists. Only kill in this round so far. It's an ace. Needs a, something of a miracle and he's not gonna get it. 18-18, we do overtime once more. What a battle between these two teams, why not? Yeah, I think that guy speaks for everyone. Thank God we get another. We're gonna get right into this one. This one's coming down, it's starting already. 18-18, magic number becomes 22. I, you have to feel like G2. They're just thinking, can we please just get one map point? Give us one chance to win this map. Give us one map or one chance to even things up in the series. Rob's blinded and, oh, Jax turns the corner. No one spotted him just yet. Yeah, how has he made it here safely? Yeah, it was just a matter of time. So many elements of danger there. Rob's has found an opening, but Modesty has got the rebuttal. He wants another. He knows the position. He's got the shoulder of JKS. Just a little bit too far out. Good Lord. And that's a change. We haven't seen Modesty in that position. A good change and into a two on two. Harrigan gets him back. Hunter's gonna rotate over this bomb toward middle because that's where Alexi B has found a bit of space, a bit of timing. Brokey as well though, wise to it, will rotate to Kerrigan. And rather than split the sights and have to go for a one-on-two retake, they are gonna play this together. They don't have the information as to where that bomb is going though, and that means this should be a free bomb plan. G2 at B. Smoke is gonna plume, and it's actually gonna give a little bit of cover over to FaZe to be able to cross over. Get out of this window if Kerrigan's bold enough for it, and indeed, of course he is. Oh, Kerrigan, Alexi, can't connect the shots. Both of them trying. Finally, Kerrigan gets it. It's just down to Hunter. They've got to be sure that it's got to be on the left side, because Kerrigan was there as the bomb went down. The planter never went to the right, never went toward Catwalk. So they have to clear the market, and then they've got to look toward the van. But Hunter beats them to the punch, and Kerrigan needs to go aggressive. Tap bomb! Hunter gets forward, and we've got another round and a lead for G2. You got to love that clutch. A little kiss on the head as well from Jax. Great stuff from Hunter all throughout this map. From start to finish, he's delivered. Important clutch. Giving G2 one of those must needed, one of those so valuable T rounds. Kerrigan just could never find him. One round lead for G2 moving forward. Hunter getting his own chant from the crowd. He's earned it. Double peak position, Brokey gets off stairs. That could have been problematic. They flash around that corner like they did before. It's a bit more default from G2. Nico's gonna be up in Palace. Monacy and Jax to take control of a ramp. Alexi just getting Hunter into place in connector. He's gonna rotate back around, shuffle around towards the A site to join up and link up with his teammates. That's some information gathered. Pop flash in, Jay Cancel hear the footsteps on a ramp. Brokey turns away from a flashbang himself, gives Modesty the angle. Oh, they both miss a chance. They both miss an opportunity to give their team a one-man advantage. Brokey moves out, it's Nico to deliver. It's Nico to deliver, but JKS in response. Two quick kills and wraps a couple more. It's all down to Modesty. But oh, is he surrounded. 19 all. JKS, my god. The resilience of him inside of the site, he's completely locked out and surrounded, and he manages to get two. Rops comes in and doubles up as well. And the standings leading the way, Matt. It's 32 kills for JKS, Rops at 30. Those are the top two fraggers for FaZe. What a stud. Twist has gone very quiet. Since about round 13 when they secured that in regulation, not round 13 overall, but when they had their 13th round on the board that was, because he's been 28 and now he's only at 29. So good that JKS stepped up when he did. What a luxury. One mechanically gifted rifler goes quiet. You've got another incredibly gifted mechanical rifler to step up and take his place. Nico, good reaction. Slow start, but he arrived at some point during the second half, and now he's not taking his foot off the pedal. Twist, oh, the timing on that. He just missed Hunter. They're gonna think this is clear. Hunter's gonna walk in with Oh my lord. He's checked it again. They think this is clear twice. He can look right toward JKS, but he was ready for it at this time. He has an AK, so a clean 
concise headshot will put him down and bring us now to a four on four back over toward B. Don't jump again. Don't you dare jump again. <laughs> yeah, but look at the way, look at the shift of the defense now. Minute on the clock with that information gathered. Twist slinks back from catwalk, now pushing back forward as Brokey's rotated over with the AWP. Defense in disarray as they try and find some comfort. And I think this is a great call from Alexi. At least looking at the minimap. They were spotted. They know it. They call back towards the A bomb site. It's twist they have to worry about at the moment. Surely this is checked. Surely this is cleared. He go down the ramp. Again, just under his gaze, but this could be massive. Twist finds the first. Oh, immediately, all the attention goes back toward him. That'll drop the bomb temporarily, but the position of three coming back through connector. If Twist could have had a lineup, if they could have put utility, they would have had a huge opportunity. Brokey, he still gets in behind. Down goes Modesty, follows it up as Jax is in the open. There was no smoke in play, and Nico has to save the day, but the time is running out. Nine seconds, and he's unaware as to where to look. His back exposed, and JKS will just wait for him to tap the bomb, to play into his perfect position, and it is going to be JKS that gets phase clear number 20. Again, they'd seen JKS so much towards A-Ramp, so much towards Dark, so much in any position but CT spawn. And Nico's just taking an educated guess of where he's gonna be. It's the wrong one. You gotta give the heroics over to Brokey, though. Running through the Molotov. All that damage is Molotov damage. It delivers a double kill on top of everything. Players making the play they have to to win their team the round. It's absolutely stunning. We switch sides. We knew this was gonna be a brawl, did we not? Yeah, we did. Whoa. But I think we doubted it. We doubted it after some of the slow first halves we'd had from both of these teams, but resilience has been shown by everyone. And now they really wanna capitalize on Jax's position. Yes, they know he's been so successful there in so many of the CT rounds, so wasting no time. The Flames and the Wrap. Twist will get the kill. They even cover off Connector so that no one can repeat and capitalize on those positions. They lost one in the process though, so it's still a four on four. No further kills before the bomb goes down. It's a great call from Kerrigan here to get them into the post plant. Now it's all on teamwork. Molotov is going to come out. That'll flush JKS into the open, but they can't find him. It's found safety at the default boxes. Spam through. Alexi does grab his head, but Nico is way too exposed. Rops out in the open as well. It's back in behind the box. Missed the opportunity to try and fire into the smoke towards CT. Brokey still waiting. Oh no, he's got his wing clipped. Monacy spotted all he needed, Rob's down as well, Hunter back in, it's not planted for him, it's not planted for him at all, he's got to go aggressively, he can't, Alexi B holds the angle and we're tied again. <laughs> A desperate round, and again Monacy just clips the elbow, oh it's spectacular, 20 all. And this is what makes Kerrigan such a dangerous in-game leader as well. This isn't necessarily any kind of high-level strategy or tactics. He's noticing this tendency, noticing this weakness. They're calling it out. We've seen Jax in this position in dark so many times. And Kerrigan's like, all right, he's probably playing there again. Let's go right back at it. The pace is brutal, and they almost steal a round away. Remember as well, FaZe Clan has had seven map points. G2 has not had a single one just yet. They're desperate for it. Absolutely right. They haven't had one since, what, they had eight in a row in Inferno, to be fair. Too soon. Whoa. Hunter goes immediately around the corner. Kerrigan caught. Alexi B could be in bad position, though. Gets the first through the smoke, but it's immediately traded. Monacy with information, but no vision as the smoke goes down a window, and Hunter has to come back in. Monacy still makes good on the play. Twist was able to go undetected, though, and drops inside of the site. Monacy has to hold further. Oh, he's still waiting as well. Back toward me. The window, excuse me, I thought he was way back toward mid for a second, but yes, he is going to be looking down toward Catwalk. Jax is in behind them, though. This is definitely going to be G2 stealing this one away. They should get their first map point right now because there's no chance, surely. They look that way in the right time. Nowhere to go but forward. Twist will do it valiantly. Oh, Modesty, he gets caught out. Twist finds that as well. He should have gone down to the first shot, but somehow evaded it. They still don't know where Jax is. Twist so low, and he's left in a one-on-one. -on -one. Five HP against an M4A1S. And he will try and elevate himself in the corner. The bomb is the only thing he has going for him in this situation is Jax will jump down. He's not seen him go either direction. He could have snuck back through the door. He could have gone in toward Checker. Maybe he sneaks market, but Jax needs to consider every single angle, and he looks the wrong way. Twist will do it instead. And another clutch for the man from overseas. I don't know how FaZe keeps finding themselves, finding ways to get out of these situations. This felt like G2 had everything wrapped up. 
We mentioned it earlier, there's a fine line, and I think Hunter might have overextended here on this round, making a play while everyone was paused before everyone was in, but a missed shot from Monacy as well. A good fight, a good duel for Tuas on Nico. And somehow, FaZe just avoids every single situation that should have ended it. 21 to 20, another chance for FaZe to take a 2-0 lead in this series. How many of these can G2 survive? Give me all of them, let's In go. one map. Games like this in the Spodek in front of fans after two years away, three years in this auditorium. Monacy's gonna start it off, Kerrigan goes down. G2 looking to force a third overtime. They're gonna work their way in from Tetris. Jax is in a different position. They think he's in underneath the shadow, but he doesn't know there's two. He's looking for the response above, and that's how Robs will strike back. Yeah, Jax had to have been so happy when he sees the Molotov going in towards Dark. Good change of position. Brokey and Twist working in towards the B bomb site. Nico, Hunter, and Alexi are going to work together to clear out mid. They want to control this part of the map. They want to have it for information. It's put Hunter in a really tough spot, especially considering Brokey has that AWP. How does Rops play this? How aggressively does he want to lurk? He's going to see the bomb site is pretty much clear. Nico has no idea he's out, but that smoke gives away the positioning. Rops now inside of the A bomb site, but G2 still has no idea. Monacy's being cautious with the off, but Nico's not. Nico recovers. And Hunter's now in a solid position. He's gonna hear the footsteps. And he should be able to get at least, at bare minimum, it's gonna be one. He transfers over. Nice frag, and broke. He's got him in return. One versus three. But he's gonna get no chance to get it started. 21-21, we need more again. We need more overtimes. We're gonna take a break because we've gotta catch our breath. We are starting at scratch once more. Sorry, I have to go. Okay. Nice, thank you guys. One's coming jungle. Both. Both, both, both. both. can't call. I don't know, I'm here. That's window. Window. In the kitchen. He jumped in window. I have to go around mid, okay? He can go kitchen. Sorry, already sorry. Start our third overtime on Mirage. Fourth overtime overall, just in the first two maps as well. These teams, neck and neck. Neither of them has shown any dominance just yet. This is absolutely brutal what both of these teams have had to play through in these opening maps. Inferno, a win for FaZe in overtime. Mirage yet to be decided, but G2 has had to survive some scares. A lot of map points against them. Hunter at 43 kills. Nico with the op is gonna find Brokey, slides in towards Palace. It's a double op setup for the defense. Rop still in this position, is gonna try and work forward, Kerrigan. Well, I'm still in his hands with an additional smoke down and spawn for him to deploy and try and sell that there's a bit more going on toward the A side as the remaining two players that I've not mentioned yet, Twists and JKS. The Commonwealth Connection will try and work the underpass position and come out toward middle. Jax is going to get aggressive. Oh, Kerrigan's got to be ready for this, surely. He's got to be. They can't possibly lose two positions, and Jax looked away too soon. I think Kerrigan might have seen his shoulder on a jiggle peek. Monacy, oh, he looks away as well. Timing is not with the G2 players. They're getting picked off one by one. Nico's gonna try and step up to the plate next. He's gonna step in front of the Molotov as well. Ooh, it ticks him. I don't know if Rob's heard that. I don't know if that was passed over. But still, this A bomb site's in so much danger. I think Kerrigan may have heard it while running away, to be honest, because he's already looked back that direction. He slowed things down. Nico could foil this entire round, but Rob's going back with Kerrigan. I think they're gonna play for the trade on his position. It's all down to timing, though. Look at Nico. He's got so many people to worry about. Got Palace to worry about. Got Connector. Got Jungle to worry about, but not any longer. JKS falls down. He's going to be committed towards a ramp. Smoke behind him. He needs to get out of this position. He needs to relocate. Displace. He's at least got Hunter coming in towards Ticket to join up with him. So a little bit of help now from his cousin. Twists, though, still working on Connector. Alexi B wants to get behind him at Catwalk. He needs to go quickly. They need to find these kills concisely. Shadow shows missed shot. Missed shot of the AWP, and he nearly gets a second crack at it. Rops is down. Alexi B, he got position just in time. Twist turns around and realizes it, but it's a one-on-one -on -one with seven seconds. Twist is going to grab That's the time. bomb. He does. Oh, oh, he doesn't. No. He was just outside. He was just on the line, and he has to go for the kill instead. It's Hunter that shuts him down. It's deja vu. He ran out of time in the same spot with Nico. That is so brutal, just couldn't get the plant going. First round to G2. Unreal, unreal stuff. Hunter again called upon to bring G2 back into the round and he does just that. He does more, he brings him back into it and then gets him over the finish line, 22-21.
25 is the winning number for those of you keeping count at home. I've lost count, so thank you, Jason. I don't know that 25 will be enough, to be honest. Nico, grading down below, catches out JKS early pick. He'll fall back inside of connector. Smoke's still down at the bottom of it, so he's safe to do so. Listen, his AWP has looked sketchy in certain positions and in certain situations, but you can't deny it's provided G2 with two opening kills here in triple overtime. Hunter is arriving, Alexi under a lot of pressure. Molotov's right out, still. Hunter misses an opportunity, but they have great positioning. Alexi B still alive over at the bench. There's some spam through, Hunter's gonna burn Rops alive, and Nico's got another with the AWP, and all of a sudden, Brokey falls down as well. Twist can get nothing done, and G2 are up 23-21. The game that never ends. Not anytime soon, but G2 getting closer to shutting this one down. FaZe Clan haven't found the difference maker so far in overtime being the T-Rounds. It's what they struggled for so much in regulation, and even when we thought they started off overtime phase plan with two T-sides, G2 was able to respond with the same. They're gonna go aggressive this time. JKS already top of the stairs, working his way through. I mean, flashbang doesn't matter. Monacy is the flash, and you can cut his vision. He's still got the shot. Kerrigan gets two back, however, and it's the advantage for phase. Oh, good shot from Kerrigan. Again, the change of pace, though. I think, you know, you and I had the conversation when he called that in regulation at 15 to 10. It ended up, it started the streak of G2 coming back and forcing the first overtime to begin with here. It nets him around. They would have rather had the first one, I think. 23-22 in the favor of G2. Getting the T round all important. G2 a chance to get their first map point in this series. Straight to the AWP of Monacy to try and get them openings. This twist is going to drop down aggressive toward middle very fast. Flashbangs. He's got to back off. He does get inside connector, thankfully, before he was stuck in no man's land because that was a short death if he were. Quiet on the map. Nico towards a ramp. Just presence from Monacy up at the top mid boxes. Hunter slowly creeping in from underpass. Brokey and Twist in tandem. Attached at the hip for the moment. Very centralized defense. JKS is going to be in dark. Rops is huddled at the back of the A bomb site. No mistakes being given up. No peaks whatsoever. G2 would love to have one, but FaZe is definitely not going to give it to him. And now we start our move just at the one minute mark. Shot through the wall. Hunter's already pulled away from that. Timing is everything again as Nico nearly gets Kerrigan down. Caught with the smoke out, damage done. That allows Alexi B to collect. A twist has gone back in to, to maintain the same position with the smoke down. He was able to do so, and Jax, he sprays him but doesn't spot a timer on this, though. That gun barrel sticking out a long way for twists and so many players to stare into that direction. He has to be absolutely perfect. You're gonna go for the bomb play. He can swing this. He can try it tonight. He doesn't. Jax gets him back instead. Bait it out perfectly. And it's just two JKS and Rops to try and hold this back. They'll start it off by getting Hunter. But this is a big ask or G2 gets map point. Yeah, and they've got so many players. G2, this, this round should be impossible. They even have a Molotov left on Monacy as well whenever he wants to toss that out. But he's not switching to it at any point. He's keeping the big gun in his hands. Here comes the retake utility. Nico's waiting for the hop out. So many advantages. Jax is waiting for contact. He's going to swing as soon as a shot is fired. Oh, there it is. Nico goes down. Jax hasn't swarmed, but Modest, he's got the angle. And there we go for G2. True to their name. Two chances to close out the map. Faze not yet being under this sort of pressure. Drop the first CT round. Double up setup. They're going to go straight to it. Not used to this pressure here on Mirage. They've got plenty of experience on Inferno, and they delivered. They made it look great. 24-22, but these T-Rounds have been tough. Double op set up, Brokey and Kerrigan. G2 with a bit of a change of pace of their own in the previous round, slow to start the round, but as soon as they pulled the trigger, they returned the corner before Kerrigan even realized what was happening. JKS plays where Jax has. He's going to extinguish the flames below him and go up the ladder, try and get position above, but doesn't want to commit to a peak because it's a bit obvious. Is it not? 
Being in that position, oh, they sprayed him. They sprayed him, but he turned it around, Jax. Blinded up, we'll get the opener again. The advantage for G2, we might be tied 1-1 if they continue in this fashion. Twists, holds his nerve with 5 HP. That lets Brocky come back in and take out Nico as well. I think Alexi is kind of confused where he wants to put that Molotov down. They need to get this bomb planted. The reinforcements are arriving. More importantly, the perimeter is under attack. Modesty, oh, you have no idea what's coming. Rops takes the shot, finds the kill, and what do you do if you're Alexi and Hunter at this point? Fight as valiantly as you dare to try and close this out right now. Hunter holding. Smokes go down instead. They want to try and swing Rops out from above, and Alexi B would have to be well aware of that position because there's nothing his teammate could do. Till the trade comes through. Rops gets it. There's the trade I was talking about, but now three players to swing, not planted for him. And Brokey comes around the corner to absolutely smoke him with the AWP. He might have another overtime. That's a great find for Rops, because I mean, that's the kill that really seals it. Hunter can't actually do anything. Bomb's not planted for him. He's meant just to spray them down if they're coming in to try and find his teammates. And obviously, that option just wasn't available any longer. One more chance for G2. 24 23. Twist back on top for FaZe with 40. Everyone's relatively close, though. 46 for Hunter still leads the way. I know kills at this point. Again, it's not really about that. Let's just close this game. Get it across the line. JKS trying to make that hard for G2 to do. Jax, though, doubles up. Twist goes down. And it's another man advantage for G2 to shut this out. All right, calm it down. Everybody chill. Everybody needs to just pause and not get picked off. You need to find where the next point of aggression from FaZe is going to come. It's Kerrigan on Catwalk making the push, but again, Rops is investigating Palace. He had that phenomenal flank in the previous round that saved the day. If he goes too far, if he does too much, it's Kerrigan to find the equalizing kill. You're absolutely right, though, Rops. He's going to peek it. No, he doesn't. He doesn't elect to do so. He would have spotted all three players. That would have been such massive amount of information. So important. And also, I mean, it would have just funneled them away from the A bomb site. They've chosen to do that electively anyways, but they're missing that intel. All three players from FaZe on their own. Kerrigan in lateral room, no backup available. Brokey at the B bomb site. It'll take a minute to activate Kerrigan in support. Rops just now making his play and it's all clear. This doesn't really take away the possibility of the A bomb site, so Rops can't stray far away. Oh, Kerrigan, changing your position, Jax is gonna turn. Oh, they'll peek. Nico swings in. Big time kill. Smoke behind him, but Brokey is just chilling. He's got one. Nico needs to get the ball in 25 seconds. He can play this out. He can bait it. AK 47 knows he's likely in a one on one situation. The chance that Rops is all the way back over toward this site. Unlikely, but Brokey repositions and Nico can't find him. Guess what, Jason? Guess what, Jason? We got another. Oh, baby. Four overtimes required on this. Just map two. Five in the series already. Absolutely incredible. Both of these teams just barely hanging on. Kerrigan, the early warning system. He gets the kill. Allows Brokey to move into a perfect position. And Brokey puts a stop to it. Even Nico's trickery with the smoke, trying to tap the plant and worm his way through. Drops. Drops down with the AWP. Doesn't want to commit to this fight. Fails out quickly. Although still has the angle. Still a little bit of danger here. Quick shot from the AWP, not landing. Rops will reposition as a result. Nico's being patient. They know that they've been contentious about aggression on this A-side, both teams from the CT perspective, so he'll just sit and make sure no one dare walk through that door. Oh, there's a good defense here, though. This is gonna be tough. G2, a long road ahead if you wanna take this bomb site. JKS and Dark, Twist huddled up, hiding, baiting, waiting, throw key. Ooh, JKS pushes forward. He gets taken down. That's one defender gone. They still have yet to see or spot Twist. Good find from Brokey moving around the smoke. That smoke allows so much mobility for the defenders. Molotov, utility used to flush him out. He can't connect the next one. And uh, they still have not seen Twist. That's a huge bit of information for Twist. The fact that he goes forward on the Molotov, they had no idea. And he comes out, twists the corkscrew into the back. It's 25 for FaZe. That's uh, so brutal. You can see there's no reaction as well. There's that silencer coming into play as well. Nobody could call and get that information out quick enough or accurately enough to respond to the situation. Even with an early opening kill from Nico, the fact that Twist is never spotted and Brokey's taking so much attention, Twist gets some freebies. 
Twist was elusive in Grand Finals. He was never appearing when Liquid were falling time and time again to Astralis. He was so good during their run in 2019. He became an absolute beast in these situations, and that experience is no different now on Phase. What a performance so far for him. Gives the difference so far in this. The fourth overtime. JKS will hold. Brokey has to work back. Fast plan. Very clean take. Good execution with the smokes. Ooh, good find from Brokey over the top. That's Nico gone down, just trying to provide some cover. Alexi, he falls as well. Faze really shrinking this post plant defense. They're wrapping all around it. Brokey with another. Hunter's just gotta hold the line. He can do nothing but try and stop Brokey from being effective. He's spammed down. It's all on Modesty. No chance for a second shot. Surely one more. They haven't found him. They haven't pushed him yet, and they're gonna find him eventually. Brokey. 39 kills now in the game, and that one's important. 26-24. Stylish from him as well. He shoots at the ground and swaps to the AK, hoping someone's gonna swing the peak, expect him to be reloading the AWP. He's playing all the mind games to get the angles, but yes, it is FaZe that have the first two to be 26-24. And the conversation now is just, man, how deep of a playbook can you actually possibly ever have to deal with this many overtimes? One final timeout for G2. Fair play, they've held on to it for this long. That's impressive in its own right. But what can you really use it for? Pace changes. Different positions of the op. A trick play. All the options running through your head. One T-round is all G2 wants. The timeout exclusively used for this one single round to give them some space in the next half of OT. Jump down below. Brokey starts it off. Alexi B shut down. Normality resumed perhaps on the CT sides as... Even with ball plants, G2 yet to get the attack. On the board, as Hunter will sneak out. Wops is still behind the smoke. Very, very finite amount of time in which he can play that position. Nice snap back, Hunter. Great response, great reactions. Oh, they flash twist in, but it bounced off his own body. Nearly cost him his life as he tried to counter the frag inside of the middle. Yeah, G2's got to be so happy about that one. Nico's cleared everything out. Monacy in support with the AWP. This is a dangerous angle for the AWP, and you can see Brokey wants nothing to do with that battle. He's going to wrap all the way around towards CT spawn, but he's been very effective in that position. Utility raining out from the attack, but they still haven't taken the bomb site. They don't even want it. They don't need it because Nico's screwed it out. They just want the plant, the safe plant at the front of the site, and then hopefully, hopefully, you force phase into action against the AWP of Monacy. Good trade by Jax. Makes the retake less likely. Ooh. Hunter with this big flank could be absolutely massive. Jax holding a tough angle. Even Modesty repositioning. The retake is gonna look vastly different than what FaZe expected. Oh, Jax almost goes down through that smoke. Hunter's gonna go all the way around towards CT spawn. You'll never expect that. Brokey goes down. Modesty has a clear line of sight. He doesn't need to peek. Jax has one more. And even though he goes down, what can you do, Twist? Oh, baby. There's no time. There's no time. Get all the kills you want. Modesty's gonna win. And out gets him that valuable round. 26-25, we swap it over. Two for FaZe would close this out. We're heading into round 52 in this game. And there it was, that was the flash. You could see it, it just caught, I think it might've been the edge of the wall. I thought it was Twist body itself, either way. I, I was so shocked when I saw Hunter rotating through CT spawn. I thought for sure with that plan, it'd be back towards Catwalk, but of course that's too obvious. He switches it up entirely. Nico hasn't really gone away from this AWP since he started picking it up. Be too critical. He's got 35 kills. He's really shot up the scoreboard with it, but ooh, as I say that. Caster's curse, Jason. Well done. Twist gonna self flash. Doesn't go for the bounce that we've seen other players do, and then just goes for a straight strafe run boost with the AK. No one to be spotted down toward connector. Missed smoke middle as well. That could have been a huge problem for them. Still has bomb. There's two inside of the B apartment positions. JKS down below waiting to work the underpass potentially toward mid. Twist just gonna chill there for now. Who's gonna recover? Who's gonna find the equalizing kill for G2? Bring it back to an even affair. Ooh. 
This is some aggression. We've seen this over towards the beat bomb, so a twist doesn't clear deep enough. How could you? How could you know? How could you know? How could you possibly put your crosshair there? Alexi goes down. He probably thought for sure he was going to have at least a decent fight. Hunter and Monacy in position, in the correct position. It's them against the world. Not fast enough this time for Monacy, but Hunter flashes in his favor. He's got three. Oh, my, as he sneaks back out. He is absolutely hunting all the prey today. And it rocks. The only one left gets shut out by Monacy in the end. Hunter's been called upon so much. This, this map is his. He has been a monster. 53 kills for Hunter in this game. Just one more time saving them. This time it's a three on five. That is spectacular stuff. Him and Monacy combined to keep G2 going forward. 26 all. This time Nico's gone back to the M4. Off in the hands of Brokey, off in the hands of Monacy as well. Monacy couldn't quite hit the shot this time. Monacy has to fall off of that as well. They have to reposition, but there's no chance to capitalize. From the phase perspective, as Alexi B holds inside of the window this time, smoke down and twist will work out underneath. He is AK. Trying to find something for phase to get them to another map point. 28 wins it, 27 27, and then, well, we do it again. And I won't rule that out at all in this series. Yeah, why not? Twist. Just waiting. Mid-round aggression called again for G2. Nico and Jax doubled up. Rob's just waiting on the other side. This could be massive. They're gonna slide into it. He's ready. He's prepared. He sees the shoulder, but can't complete the kill. Huge peak, big time peak. Alexi's waiting for his moment. He's waiting for the right time to peek out. It might just be now. Twist disappears into the smoke, but Brokey gets caught. Brokey gets caught a little bit late. And Monacy with that deep angle gives it up for a second. That's the bomb in the hands of JKS, but he can't land the shot. One's close up, but he's aware of the possibility. 27 for G2. And another map point opportunity for them. They have not had a CT-sided map opportunity, yet phase are against the wall. Finally. <laughs> yeah, really. 27-26. Oh. A chance. Here we go. Monacy and Jax at the A-bomb site. Kerrigan leading the way in halls. Oh, this could be so tough. Monacy. The deep angle would be fantastic if he can, he, if he can pick one off. But he's gonna, they're going to be in hot pursuit. They're definitely going to be trying to chase this down. Kerrigan, here comes the swing. Oh, the jiggle peak. The jiggle peak. Monacy's negated. Nico's left out in the open, but he stands up to the task. Picked off by Brokey, an important trade. But that's at least, at least going to force the tactic off. Look at Alexi B. Already up the Piatal apartments right now. He's closing the map in so effectively. Monacy got away. They were ready for the position, and now he goes aggressive again. It's Rops downed immediately at the arch. No. I spotted him. <laughs> I cannot believe he just jumps up and looks for that exact play, although fair enough. I think they've spotted it a couple times. Alexi's kind of given up that game, and he's been super, super aggressive a number of times. Now he's trapped in halls. Twist, Brokey, and Kerrigan. They know he's here. They smell a rat, and they want to take him out. Alexi's got to fight his way out. Twist gets the kill. Immediate headshot. Down to 46, was tagged in the process, though, and that will weaken him up slightly, but he's going to take charge, take initiative, and stampede his way toward Hunter, who can hear this coming the whole time, so he gets in behind the van. Twist goes past that, though. He's going to jump down. He hasn't cleared it for his teammates, though. This is massive. Hunter, he can deny the plant right now. Kerrigan down there. We're ready to look that direction. Twists. He's still alive in this somehow as he gets around the other side of the market. Hunter gets away. Brokey finds him with the AWP, and Twist gets the round. We are done. No, excuse me, not done. 27-27, and this game continues to go on. One HP. Both, both, both. both. Oh, Edward already. One is one HP, okay? Possible. 27 27. We've got a fifth overtime at hand. And this is the game that truly never ends in the grand finals on the stage of IM Katowice. It's fitting that we have this historic overtime game.
after such a long and storied history here in this arena. The interesting thing as well is if FaZe had closed out Mirage in the deciding game top brackets, they would have been on the same side of the bracket as G2, and they would have met in the semifinal as opposed to Na'Vi. Remember, they had Na'Vi at 15 to 10. Yeah. It was even 15 to 8. So apparently Mirage, they just don't know how to win on it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's tough. It's a nebulous thing, isn't it? And remember, both these teams coming in with, with a, you know, new rosters, essentially. Rops coming in at the beginning of the year, but I mean, even with the stand-in situation, this is a very, very tough scenario for anyone. Obviously, G2 as well. New star, Opper, new in-game leader, new coach. I don't even know what the conversation is going to be like in a situation like this for either one of these teams to keep your focus for this long and then have the knowledge, although you're not thinking of it yet, the knowledge that three more potential maps can be played in this series. These boys are in for a long night of fragging. We're all in for a long night of fragging. I think so. And uh, players being given a bit more of a break this time to use the bathroom, I think that's <laughs> reasonable considering we've just played about two maps of Counter-Strike for the price of one. Uh, here on Mirage, 27-27, unbelievable as well. The circumstances to get us here. The heroics, and it's not just one player. That's the crazy thing, because we talked about G2's efforts coming into this, uh, certainly in this final, but into this event, everyone's been fragging, everyone's been finding form. Nico was slow to start, and even he's back into this game. It's been so much time, obviously, he's going to come alive eventually, but everyone's had a moment. Everybody has had to step up in a certain situation to put yep. us in this position. I'll tell you what, though, I got to I gotta imagine the mentality of Nico, again, not thinking of it now, but perhaps after this map, is just saying, if I didn't start slow, we wouldn't have been in this situation, even though he's risen to the occasion now. A lot of that blame is going to be internalized, certainly. Freeze time, running down, 27-27, Katowice. We're going back live. Fifth overtime, second map of the IM Grand Finals. FaZe have a one-map lead in this best of five series. I don't think I've ever had to say round 55. I've done 78s. Uh, Good for you. Not quite in a situation. <laughs> Jason, it wasn't like that. I'm just trying to give you perspective. Uh, not in a situation like this, not on a stage, not yeah. with nerves and stakes this high, not in a grand final. This is unprecedented territory, no doubt. Oh, here we go. Brokey, good kill. Nico, immediate trade. We take our rook, we'll take your knight. Rops is gonna sneak up a ramp. He's got a good angle. Jax is playing this retake again. That was one of the conversations. Kerrigan starting abusing the positioning of Jax, and we've seen him play a couple different spots now. Rops is gonna clear it silently. This fight, he never expected it. How would you ever expect that angle as the A bomb site anchor? JKS to go down next. Alexi B just keeps saying, if you're never gonna have people here, I'm just gonna keep pushing up and we'll just take the 50 50 and see if you can clear me out. Kerrigan getting closer to connector with the smokes in position. Alexi B once again is well removed from this, trying to get map and information toward B. Good flash pushes Monacy back for a moment. Monacy has had many moments. So far, the Spodek tap the bomb. Trying to get broke into position, looking away at the wrong time, but Kerrigan was ready for it. Communication between the two on as the bomb will go down. You can see that immediately eradicates Kerrigan's position, and Brokey has to be well aware that he is not only towards CT, but Alexi B has to be coming from that side of the map. And where has he come from with this much time? And no one over toward B to counter this. He could have, well, that gives it away. I was gonna say go towards CT. Nice nade, touchdown. Puts him on 47. Not willing to go much beyond this position, has to get off as he's flashed away, and Alexi B crosses in. brokey has got him immediately down below. Molotov on the spawn as well. That should pretty much do it. Monacy's gonna try and get up and take him down, and he's ready for it. Great headshot from the Latvian laser. What an absolute monster of a clutch. And you're right, just enough silence for G2 to start considering towards a ramp. Alexi B had to run the gauntlet. That had to have been nerve-wracking, but just finding the slimmest peak to not expose himself to Monacy while still being able to stop the defuse from happening. Brutal, brutal round from Brokey. Even a blind kill to start it out. Oh, the whole way through, this is tough. That is a tough angle, easy to overpeak that one. We've seen Monacy hit some very slim shots in the Molotov. Is the icing on the cake? 28-27. Phase with a T round. Molotov out towards top mid. Nico's gonna go down. Picked off by Kerrigan. Modesty can't get anything done either. Oh, all of Phase coming alive here in round 56. Hunter, man, can he really deliver it again? Can he really deliver them back into this situation? Back into the round? The answer's no. Two round lead for Phase. Two round lead significantly as well on the terrorist side. They come out swinging in full force. On God knows how many rounds we're on now, Jason. 
overtime at number five, and they need two more rounds to close it if they can get another T side, if they can sweep the T side. Oh, that'd be everything. I, like, well, you have to imagine. And this is where you wonder, does Garrigan have it in him to call another change of pace towards that eight bomb site, towards mid, whatever it might be? We've seen it go back to it a couple of times. Twist, JKS gonna be in towards Palace. Kerrigan and Rops, they might actually just, this might actually be a little bit of a waterfall situation. Rops is blind, gonna tuck himself in on top of the flower pot. Jax didn't clear all the way. Here is that timing change. Here is that pop flash entrance. They've got two. Jax and Nico go down. Desperate situation for G2. Broke, he's even on Lurk. Lurk duty, and he's got a freebie on the Modesty. Alexi's the only one left. What a well-crafted round in the fifth overtime. Able to jump across middle. No idea, Mona, see where he needed to look when he came back outside. And Alexi B, yeah, this one's, I'm sorry, Mr. Ingame leader for G2. You're gonna have to come up with something else. This one's done. They do sweep the T side, 30 to 27. And they just need one more round to take this to a two nothing best of five series lead. I'll tell you what, Kerrigan looks so calm and collected on that stage. This deep into a game, five How many overtimes. Has he been on, though? I know that's what I'm saying. Oh. The experience, what a benefit for FaZe in this kind of a scenario. The leadership of Kerrigan, the experience of Kerrigan, all delivering for FaZe so far. I'm Absolutely gonna, magnificent. I had to go remind myself. It's been so long since I've even considered it. Dust two is our next map. That's guaranteed. And then we have Ancient and Nuke if required. Starting this one off twist, already giving the man advantage to FaZe. Change of pace on the CT side. Look at Rops, look at Rops pushed up. They even want to fight a little bit more, but they can't get the trade back. Alexi B forced off. Oh, he turned from the flash and turned back quickly enough to take down twists. That gives them the advantage now, and you're absolutely right. FaZe tried to throw a curveball into the play. And so far, it's been a home run for G2. And the cool thing is you might be nervous to make that call if you know you only got one or two rounds on the T side, but now that you have three, maybe you're thinking in your head, I got one to play with. Let's throw some trickery at him. As you mentioned, the curveball. Throw something they haven't quite seen yet or they couldn't possibly expect. G2 have a man advantage. But again, FaZe have the correct defense called. Kerrigan on catwalk and Brokey is gonna slide into the bomb side. He goes down, but Kerrigan's still alive. He's gonna pick another one off. And now tuck yourself into the corner. See if you can buy time for your teammate. It's a two on two. And of course, Kerrigan's gonna get aggressive. No way, no way, Modesty's caught him. I think he, I, I, he saw the bomb. He wanted to go for the bomb. So he puts the smoke down thinking he's gonna go defensive. They have to drop in. And he tries to strike, but JKS. Could the stand-in win map two for them? Sneaking in behind. Monacy's AWP directly down below. Surely they consider this now as JKS can't find an angle. Alexi is gonna go aggressive as well in Monacy. He's got back in the corner, he's spotted out. And this is absolutely doable now. He's got all the utility, all the play that he needs. Flash and an aid, as well as the diffuse kit. Jumping across, he'll start making noise. His position's given up, but Alexi B has been very disciplined in this situation. Quick tap, falls off, and he falls the wrong way, so as not to be spotted. Alexi B just waits it out, but JKS has it. Does he have the time, though? It's gonna be so close, absolutely. Phase of one, map two, and they'll go up two to nothing in this series. That is unbelievable, the standard. What can this man not do for Phase? Absolutely brilliant from JKS. We wondered how G2 could recover from that comeback on map one. How do you recover from a five overtime loss? Another clutch dropped. It's not done. It's not